Hope we get another family episode this time. Oh, Lord's well, getting suspicious. I was wondering when this would come out. Yeah, you know what? This is actually kind of a horrifying thought. This is not the happy family thought that I wanted to have today, but well, just to start, I guess, very broadly, I think there's a trade-off between the amount you can clearly see and intuit about people around you and the amount of energy you spend focusing on your own internal self-regulation. For example, if someone, like basically every member of the Volger, Volger? Forger family is this consumed with a secret that they're hiding that seems to tap into the same energy you might be using just for, for observation and just natural understanding of your environment. It's kind of a blinding force. And it's not just lies, it could also be like self-consciousness, which is why you often hear the, the advice when it comes to socializing that you should be focusing the most on other people and what they're saying and their mannerisms, etc. instead of wondering, you know, how you appear. But especially true for lying. I think lying blinds you to the deception of others. I mean, there is something pushing in the opposite direction, which is that if you are doing something kind of shady and on some level feel guilt for what you're doing, it's possible you're more likely to suspect other people of doing the same because you know they don't know what you're doing. So the thought emerges, well, then it's also possible I'm also getting used or duped or what have you. One thing I've experienced is I've gotten the sense that I could judge how much somebody was doing things behind my back by how much they asked me about my own actions. And like I said, it's confusing because there's two ways I can manifest. You know, one way is people asking too much because they're worried about getting harmed themselves. But another manifestation of that is not wanting to bring it up at all because if they ask you, you'll probably ask them. It just depends on their priority and what is the central emotion. Is it avoiding heartbreak and hurt, or is it self-preservation? But I think with a certain proximity to someone, you can kind of get the sense for which one it is at any given moment. So I've had very distinct times in my life, experiences where I knew something was up by what was not being mentioned. It's a weird game that Lloyd and Yor are playing because they're so consumed with protecting their identity, they're missing the, the extremely obvious signs in front of them, which makes sense given that their primary concern is self-preservation and not worrying about the other person wronging them. Yeah, it's sort of a cynical way to start this episode, but it's just what comes to mind. But anyway, no upset, etc. All that to say, it makes total sense to me why they would not be aware of each other's activities despite living together, being in such close proximity. I'm guessing it's dog food. Some kind of dog food. I'm home from not killing anyone. It's a rough life for Yor. I mean, she's got two jobs and she's expected to cook or help with the cooking. Crying? Is the job taking a toll on her or did she like ruin a dress or something? We haven't really seen her to have remorse about her work as much as I can remember. Maybe something went wrong this time. That's what she's worried about. Yay! <laughs> Happy family! No upset! Huh, Camilla. Sort of a big elephant in the room now. I mean, it's pretty dark what Yor does. I wonder how that's going to get treated as the show goes on. What, are you going to throw fondue in each other again? Or whatever it was? Sausage plate? I can't remember. I mean, she brought meat, right? It's meat in the bag. Oh, tomatoes. Oh, are they getting along now? That's nice. Yours Kitchen, episode 16. Kitchen flashback. She's so hardworking. Oh no. Oh no. Lloyd let her take the fall for that. That wasn't good. I thought she was torn up about killing, but no, we got much bigger problems like cooking. That is really great. Now maybe you can graduate to the microwave. Get on my level. <laughs> also, way to share intimate details of your husband's bowel movements with your hostile co-workers. I'd be so angry. <laughs> I'll let you throw bougie food on me. Your favorite activity. Yours kitchen. Uh-oh. It's creep o'clock. <laughs> Speaking of getting yourself a wife. This guy needs to get himself a wife. Get a wife and a life. Like a hobby, you know? Sewing, post-stamp collecting, porn addiction, kickboxing, anything is better than this. I don't know a lot about cooking, but I feel like that's ambitious. And cactus. <laughs> you know, I like the way she thinks. <laughs> I'm 
Damn. My power, though. The raw power. I feel like it'll taste good just because she's passionate and because it has cactus in it. Go ahead. <laughs> But how does it taste when it's withhold judgment? What is going to be more powerful? His taste buds? Or his bizarre infatuation with his sister? His taste buds. Oh no, his infatuation with his sister. Never doubt his creepy infatuation with his sister. <laughs> well, how do you eat, Camilla? Can't all be perfect like you. Why are they trying it too? Brought that on yourself. How did it go so wrong? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you had added the cactus. <laughs> Simultaneous eating and throwing up animation. Excellent. Ah,目玉焼きが乗ってるやつ。それを作ってみましょう。this is asking a lot. This is like way harder than what they were doing before. I mean, that might go back to what I was saying earlier. Like, she spends so much energy keeping up a facade. There you go. I feel like, you know, you don't need to like be able to cook everything. You just can have a few good dishes under your belt. Just make them really, really well. Like, Camilla really knows her stuff. That actually looks amazing. Just thinking about that sour cream. This is a man in love. <laughs> that explains how we can put up with it. <laughs> wow. Wow, Camilla. Way to treat your saint husband with respect my tsundere wife <laughs> I, I don't know he seems happy so you can't judge these relationships from the outside i don't know if this guy is like super soft or actually really courageous because it could be just that he's infatuated with her and will like throw himself under her foot because he feels that's his best option or it could be something actually pretty great which i think i was talking about recently in chainsaw man about how people who learn to interact that way perhaps got there not by accident but through experience and the only way to show them that life isn't just a series of battles is just unbelievable patience and kindness and even then there's no guarantee that it'll work it's up to the other person to have an insight. So to enter into that kind of arrangement, it means putting up with that and loving the person and not reacting, not getting emotional, understanding it, potentially for life. And I think if that decision is made halfway, it's a disaster. And if you're really expecting to get something out of it and you need something and it's kind of a game you're playing where, oh, I'll just treat her really nice for long enough and then eventually I'll get the things I actually need, then that's sort of a recipe for disaster. But if it's like, no, I see this arrangement for what it is, she's going to be my tsundere wife, <laughs> maybe forever, but I will just love her anyway and always give her the, the space. And you really can do that. It's tough. Like, I don't know many people who can do that. Then I think at least that's beautiful, if not a little bit dangerous and tiring. I'm focusing so heavily on this, this like minor thing, this minor couple maybe, because I, it's relatable to me. From the outside, everybody was telling me that it was terrible, that I should just run. But I felt like I genuinely saw what was going on. And my only regret is that I couldn't do it. I couldn't enter into that arrangement forever. It like broke me down. But no upset! No upset! Come on, Spikes family. <laughs> Good boy. Wow. Right out of the <laughs> gate. Well trained. Ooh, defense training. That should be good. Oh no, this is terrible. This is the worst when you're starving and then somebody comes home and starts cooking. Shock and fear. Oh, oh, here we go. I guess she's diligent. She learns fast. That's all right. That's all right. You're pretty close. I'm liking the look of that giant potato. Did she add the sour cream? Nice. Marriage saved. It's got the secret ingredient. Mother's love. <laughs> she put her whole life... She thought the stakes of everything were just on this single meal. Whereas Lloyd and Anya had already just given up on her cooking. And we're fine with it. Relatable. <laughs> she, I love it how that is the line. In this warm-hearted moment. And we're like, aww. Yeah, she just wants to kill. That's, I mean, it is sweet. It's, it's sweet. There we go. There we go. There's that family no upset that I needed. Oh, she's doubling down. It's an Erwin Smith gamble. <laughs> I knew it. Marriage is over. 
divorce and loneliness. And second arc, second part of the episode. Oh, look who it is. Long time no see, I think. Is it a business call or does it need some? I knew it! I knew it was something else. Wow. With friends like these, Lloyd should make this his number one priority mission. That's an interesting answer. Not totally wrong. So it has come to this. It has come to blackmail. He would never. Frankie's a bro. Frankie, you know what, Lloyd? That's really ungrateful because Frankie has been there from minute one, doing everything, going out of his way. Hmm. We have gathered a lot of intel on this love interest. Too much intel. Yeah. <laughs> This is not a mission. Yeah. That's not how it works. <laughs> oh no. That's so sad and cute. And so indirect. A conversational flowchart. What is this? Damn it, what is that show called? With Nathan? The rehearsal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taking notes here. A, B, C, D. Oh, you've already got it wrong because there's just so many foods. This is going to get real big real fast. This is exponential memorization. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> A billion possible outcomes. Yeah. At least he's honest. Is that Lloyd? Oh my god, that's a great disguise. Frankie's filled with confusing feelings. In real life though, I mean, you could prepare for years and then like... By the second question is off the rails. To be honest, the outcome has already kind of been determined. People agonize so much about the the approach for things like this, you know, social interactions or whatever. And yeah, it can help, but it's sort of like moving the needle a couple degrees out of 360. I think part of it is that we'd like to over attribute what happens to us and how other people react to us to our own actions, because it's more comforting to think we have control. But really, probably the biggest thing is circumstance, mainly timing, you know, it's like where the where people are in their lives and then just their natural tastes. So I think you just kind of shoot your shot in as respectful and honest a way as possible and then just accept whatever outcome it is. You can just shoot a lot of shots and like it'll work out. I don't know. I actually have a, a very distinct experience where I went out of my way to like figure stuff out. There's someone I really, really was super into and I was like spending 24 seven just analyzing what I should do and how I should present myself and tactics and it worked out like we developed a relationship. But there's sort of a problem there because if the personality with which someone starts to date you or like you or whatever is manufactured, that's going to fall apart really fast and going to be a disaster. I think the main benefit Lloyd just gave Frankie is just confidence because Frankie's going in there with a plan. And so he's less likely to trip over himself. And that's good. Wait, no, no, that's wrong. He's going to trip all over himself as soon as the flowchart gets derailed. <laughs> Savage. That's the thing, you gotta kind of brace yourself. You never know what's the reason either. I mean, it could be you, you know, it could be all your worst fears, you're just terrible. It could be she has a boyfriend, you know, you know. Or she just had a breakup. There's a million reasons. Couldn't even get through one. We couldn't get through one line of this flowchart. Wow, that's very specific. Lloyd, your bro needs a bro. Yeah, at least Anya loves him. I don't think we agreed to that. Did we agree to that? He's lying. Oh, no. <laughs> oh no. He got brutally rejected. He got annihilated. <laughs> Death. <laughs> Did she specifically say that? What a catch. How would she how will she ever live with the loss of Frankie? <laughs> nah, he's a great guy though. He's a super great guy. Hey, that's a bartender right there. It's on the house. Because I know what you're going through. Oh? Hey, look at that. I was hoping it would be a girl, but... <laughs> this is even more heartwarming, but less good for Frankie. Lloyd did not need psychic powers to read that situation. When I think back to times in my life where I was single, the absolute best time I ever had with dating was a time when I was going out a lot with a consistent and solid group of friends that one, really cared about me, and two, were just a lot of fun. So I would go meet girls at bars and I would meet a lot of people. A lot of that would include rejection. But my friends were so cool and so great that the rejection turned out to be kind of great because they would watch me get rejected and then I would walk back to them and then they would like cheer and then they would kind of rib me a little bit or tease me. And so 
I felt like I was adding utility to the group by being fun. And it kind of gave me like an emotional base where it was all good. You know, like everything was fine because I had people who supported me. And it all just became like framed as part of the night's story. A consequence of that was I just got super comfortable with rejection. And so I would just meet a lot of people and like anything, you know, you practice something and get better at it. I just got really comfortable talking to people because I wasn't so wrapped up in what would happen if they rejected me. It didn't become like a, you know, self-conscious thing. It just all became sort of like exploration and became fun. And once that clicked, I experienced some romantic success, but even when I didn't, a lot of the people I met turned into friends. There's something so essential to me about the the sort of the building blocks you know you try to reach too far out and i think the hierarchy of needs is a really good way of conceptualizing it it's like a really good starting point but yeah you get those building blocks in that gives you so much more to stand on when you're reaching for the the thing higher than that the essentials are so important they're actually going that's very very nice anya has a lot of power that's unrealistic you just you're lonely I don't think that's the right answer. Yeah, I mean, Lloyd, he's lonely in his relationship, too. Hmm. I honestly hope this Frankie Finding Love Saga continues, because it's great. It's, like, rich with things to mine. This is definitely one of those things where you just have to zoom out, like, as far out as you can go. I know for a fact there are a lot of people that would really love Frankie, but I think saying that they don't need love, or, you know, they don't need company, whatever, because they're spies, it's kind of a ticking time bomb. It's possible. You can do it. You can just grit your teeth and ignore your needs, but sooner or later, you're going to crack and do something stupid if you're not addressing your, your fundamental needs. And the thing is, you won't even realize you're doing it a lot of the time. Like, your subconscious will just push you and push you and push you into doing something that's not directly the thing you're avoiding, but something that will put you in a situation where there's a choice to get that thing that you can't resist. And that's how it breaks you. This is not about romance, but the first example that comes to mind about that kind of trickery is when I was quitting smoking, I was really good about not smoking, but I couldn't turn down invitations to drink with my friends. And of course, drinking with my friends led to me smoking again. And that wasn't a conscious thought, right? Like I didn't go out with the intent of smoking, but I kind of believe that that was my subconscious way of getting me to that moment where I definitely would. And the same is true of these kinds of relationships. Like Frankie's going to start finding himself at bars drinking. You know, he's going to start finding himself doing things that will lead to some kind of connection and i think actually that makes him vulnerable because he's a spy right and this is sort of a dangerous world and people can exploit that so isn't it better to just find a way to take care of it while preserving his identity i don't know it's tricky it's I don't really know about this line of work, but I'd rather, you know, meet the needs in a controlled way than deny the needs and then just have this wildly unpredictable, explosive subconscious backlash that leads to total ruin.